Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to back to Deacon Hoover Radio. Uh, this is Adam, as always. With me, as always, is the great Alex Deacon, the Deacon of Real Estate. Alex, how are we doing today, sir? Alex is doing fantastic. You look very nice today, by the well, way. Well, thank you, sir. I, I, th- I rock a t-shirt very well. I like that shirt. I He's wearing you. a Joker for President shirt. Joker for President. I, I think it's pretty I cool. always vote for the, for the right clown, yes. not for the clowns they give us. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. But listen, uh, we have a special, special guest today um, with us this week. Uh, typically, it's just you and I, Alex. But today, well, let, let me introduce him. You introduce him. You're the man. This is Josh, the man Caldwell. He doesn't have a. Uh, He's the man. Do you do you have any sort of like name that goes like I'm the deacon of real estate? I, what what are you? I don't even have business cards. I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he is Josh, the man Caldwell. He's it's, simply thanks not for coming man. out, Josh. I appreciate you guys having me. So, Alex, uh, what are we going to be talking about today? I know we're going to kind of expand on our team building uh, short that we had last mm-hmm. week. Uh, and that's why one of the main reasons we brought Josh in. And Josh, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Um, that way I won't sound as moronic as I normally do. And I'll let the experts kind of take control of this episode. Hey, uh, you'll, you'll pretty much have to just not talk. Yeah, yeah. But you know what, though? I'm married. So you're talking. I don't know so if you guys ever seen White Man Can't Jump. I'm talking right now. Yeah. I always say listen to the story of my life, White Man Can't Jump. Just yeah, kind of just just grunt or, or nod your head. Nod my head the rest okay. of the time. Alex, the floor is yours. <laughs> so Josh was nice enough to come in here. He he heads the uh, RIA, and that's, what the heck is RIA? Real Estate Investors of America? Real Estate Investors? Real Estate Investors Association. Okay, Association of America. So it's RIA OA. Rio, but there, Ria is basically you're in charge of Western PA. That, that's pretty much my zone is the the southwestern part of Pennsylvania. Yeah. It's a collaterally Pittsburgh area and pretty much anything that we call Steeler Country. And how many groups do you have right now? And what what can you tell us about the groups so we can get this out there to more investors? Because it's a it's a fantastic venue and a way to learn and to integrate yourself into the investment world and to uh, network. The main group is, is education-based. The, the entire RIA is education-based. But the main group's about 1,400 people. Then we, we sub-break it into what we call subgroups, and that can be commercial real estate, landlording, notes, anything you can dream of, house flipping, asset protection, anything that goes along with real estate, we tend to make it a subgroup and let it have its own life. And then people who are interested in that particular subset can go to that meeting. Okay. Yeah, and, and you're... Um your group meets every third Tuesday? Third Tuesday of the month, right in the North Hills in Ross Township. Gotcha. So maybe we can give them a website to go to if they want to join or get more information. They sure could. Pittsburgh, Rhea, R-E-I-A dot com. All the cool kids are doing it. You are cool, aren't you? And we, do, we, we did some bus tours recently, and Josh was uh, the main speaker. He talked about creative financing. We talked for about 45 minutes. It was very informative, and then we went on a bus tour and saw some of the projects that we have going on. So what we'd like to talk about today is team building and, and how critical and crucial it is, not just to have a, a good team, uh, obviously in this business, but really any business. You know, Even in just, just a team together, everybody achieves more. It's so true. It's such a, a simple saying that everybody kind of knows about, but... It is so true. You're not an island. You can't do this on your own. So we're going to go in, and each section we're going to talk about who are good team members to have on your real estate team. Okay, and that and it's we're going to start with attorneys and probably end up with uh, a locksmith. And there's probably thirty or fifty in between. Okay, so good. And every one of those people on your team, you should let them know you're in the investment world. And why do you, why would you want to let somebody know? Why would you want to let that locksmith know that you're an investor? Why do you think? Just uh, Adam, I, I, I me, told you not to talk. Uh, you're right. Just grunt and <laughs> nod your head. Okay, that's good. Josh, why do you think it's 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 good to have to tell your locksmith <laughs> your locksmith that you're a real estate investor? In my case, my locksmith owns about fifty units, so he kind of gets it. Um, but you want everybody to know that you're a real estate investor. Now, your locksmith, let's get into him specifically. Your locksmith is changing locks a lot of times when tenants get thrown out of the property. Now, give me a landlord who just had to throw his tenant out of his property. There's a fellow who might want to sell me a house at a discount or accept a creative finance offer. So that locksmith can be a very valuable lead to me if my locksmith wasn't already taking those for himself. That is so true. 
That is so true. I just, I'm like just mentioning locksmith now. I'm thinking, well, why aren't I calling my locksmith right now and literally talking to everybody maybe on his staff? Too. Why does it have to be your locksmith? How many locksmiths are in Pittsburgh? The locksmith, it's so true, right? So you are literally a walking marketing billboard. That's why we asked Josh to come in, because he's really good at marketing himself. But if you you can market yourself till you're blue in the face, if you don't have all the other systems in place, and if you don't have the other team members in place, you're not going to even get your first deal off the ground. Won't matter. So, okay, so we'll go into why is it important to have a good attorney. And I'll I'll give you a couple quick examples, and then I'm sure Josh will, will chime in. Do you have anything to say, Adam? Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. You can grunt a little bit. Okay. We'll let you talk in about 10 minutes. So just let us get warmed up here. Okay, so a good attorney. I'll give you a really good example. I, I'm a real estate agent. We do a lot of closings. Every once in a while, a client will want to have their Uncle Bob, who's an attorney, who does estate planning, do a closing. Because Uncle Bob can save them $180. They could prepare the deed for free. Because attorneys don't make a whole lot on closings. Where they make their money is on the title insurance. The title insurance is mandated. With, it, it, it's a set price. I don't think Uncle Bob can give you a break on title insurance. Otherwise, he, he could probably maybe pay you under the table. But I don't really know if that's legal or legitimate. But to have Uncle Bob do the closing, there's so much more to a real estate closing. Even though it's, it's very simple, it's also very not simple. Like, for instance, getting lien letters on time. If you don't order certain things on time and have the die test done on time and the occupancy permit ordered on time, then you might miss your mortgage commitment date or your closing date. And if you miss your closing date, then your hand money can be at risk. So why are you going to have an attorney handle your closings for you and set up your LLC and make sure that everything's done properly if they're not a seasoned real estate attorney? So I've had many horror stories. We could go into those. But we're not we're not going to focus on that. But Josh, what do you have to say about hiring a, a good attorney who specializes in real estate, who comes well recommended versus a family friend who can save you a few dollars? Well, the first thing is, the family friend won't save you a few dollars. The perception is just wrong. The difference between a good attorney who understands what they're doing with real estate is the good attorney will make everything go smoothly. And in our world. If I want to buy something and somebody else wants to sell it, or vice versa, the attorney's job is to make that happen in a proper, orderly manner. Conversely, if you get the wrong attorney, somebody who doesn't understand that world, they can get you, you can lose the deal at the early end, they can get you fined and theoretically imprisoned for doing a bad job. Um, And attorneys, they all pass the same bar test, and they all call themselves attorneys, but they are created very, very differently. And the The best parallel I can give you is doctors. Imagine that you have a a wisdom tooth that's infected, and your neighbor, the proctologist, says he can save you a few bucks on the service. Do you really want to let the proctologist operate in your mouth? It's pretty much what a lot of people choose to do with attorneys. They pick absolutely the wrong person and then wonder why the deal goes sideways. No, you want to find a real estate attorney, not a general attorney, not a probate attorney, not any other kind of attorney a real estate attorney, and you're going to want one at the early ages who's at least 40. You want to look to see a little gray hair. You'd really like them to be an investor themselves, and you want them to be used to dealing with investors. Uh, That's why uh, when you find your meetup groups or your RIA clubs and things like that, find out who those people are using, and that's the attorney you want to talk to. Here's a question. When would you want to have an estate planning attorney on call. When would you when would you want to talk to an estate planning attorney? Well, the the obvious is as I'm planning my estate to pass to my kids, but again, I, I I'm not saying that you don't want to talk to attorneys as a real estate investor. There are lots of attorneys you do want to talk to. Estate planning is a fantastic one. As is bankruptcy, even criminal defense. Those guys are great leads for you on property. Bingo. You know, there you you, go. you yeah. find an estate planning attorney, they know what these people have, they know what they want to liquidate. They know who's going to get the property and whether or not that person actually wants it. So they open up a whole new funnel for you in the, the world of real estate leads. And you are an asset to them as a real estate investor because to them, these all these issues that they're going to deal with, these conflicts, are a problem. You stepping into this, you can solve their problems. So you're an asset to those attorneys. 
But that doesn't happen unless you actually speak to those attorneys. So you got to get out and run your mouth a little bit. Yeah, but it just goes back to you know, where you're a walking billboard for your business and goes back to talking with the locksmith, and that locksmith may be that may be your gold mine. Yeah. That bankruptcy attorney may be a gold mine. There are every every you don't know where your next lead's gonna come from. You don't know if that bum on the street who's homeless that's why I treat everybody the same. You don't know if that guy on the street is, is a multimillionaire. But first of all, it's not fair to treat anybody differently. Secondly, every lead should be treated with like this could be my next big big lead. It's a great point. What makes real estate fantastic is the stock market is it's open to everybody. Anybody on the planet can figure out what a share of Heinz stock sells for and why. Real estate is an asymmetric market, meaning that not everybody has the same information. And if Alex or I find a super bargain, nobody else is going to see that property before we close on it. So if the garbage man tells me about a vacant property up the street and I can buy it at a super discount, that garbage man just opened up a fantastic world for me and I might have made sixty, seventy thousand dollars by talking to the garbage man. There you go. So what Josh is saying is probably something like they taught you in kindergarten. Be nice to people because you're supposed to be, and God says to be nice, so be nice. It's gonna make you money. How about that? Be nice and make money. That's my next book. <laughs> I get paid to be nice. <laughs> Alright, so we got attorneys, super important. Uh, get referrals from, from other investors. Interview the attorneys. Just don't pick somebody. And also, attorneys can be specific. Like, we have an attorney who does a lot of our sheriff sale work. I wouldn't want anybody else doing any of our sheriff sale work. It's but another, that, it's another micro attorney. niche. You need to yeah. understand that specific world. Some attorneys know commercial, like large commercial, small commercial, whatever. It's, it, you know, there are those micro differences that you know you need to be aware of the procedural issues the contract law issues mm-hmm. there's a lot to know and part of your team building is you build a team so that you can plug in people who are an extension of yourself so i don't have to go to school to learn all there is to know about contract law i just have to find somebody else who knows a lot about it and then ask them to do what i wish to do like a big commercial agent or um Attorney is not necessarily going to know how to do residential evictions. True, you know, not his so, sport. And and like you said, Josh, everybody goes and gets and passes the same bar exam, but it's the practical knowledge that the everyday how the, the, the it really works in the real world at the magistrate's office and how things are supposed to work, but then how things actually practically, you know, all practicality work. And it's so important. So we have we have some good attorneys that just do evictions for us because that's what they do. They're good at it. Um, why is it good? I'm going to let you talk in a few more minutes, okay? You're doing good over there, though. Can I get you a drink of water? I'm talking to Adam, by the way. You good? No water? Okay. Um, a good CPA. It, and I start with, I think, the, the top three, probably attorney, CPA, and real estate agent. I mean, they, not necessarily in that order, but why is a good CPA good versus a bad CA, CPA bad. Was that good English? No, but it was an effective question. Yeah, but you get you got <laughs> So explain to me, just, just yeah. do some explaining. Pe- people look at a CPA and, here. and they think that there's a cost there. A good CPA makes you money. Um, it, it, the tax code is so ridiculous and convoluted that no human being on the earth understands all of it. But a good CPA, and when I say good, I mean one who's experienced with real estate investors, because the types of deductions that we take are different than, say, well, any other business, really. And every every investor, including myself, we want to write off everything this year. Yes. And there's actually you're, that's actually wrong. You can actually get in major trouble over it, especially as you get bigger, your target gets larger on your back. And you're writing everything off this year when it should be written off over, like, carpeting or something. I don't even know the, the laws, but carpeting should be written out over, like, seven years or something. The accelerated depreciation a, stuff. That... A furnace should be written off over X amount of years. And if it was up to me, I'd write everything off, including my dog. Yep. Yeah, the, the attorney's job is to write off as much as you can legally. 
um, so that you don't end up getting yourself sent to federal prison, which I understand is the nicest kind of prison, 